Hey, what's up, guys? Heretic you here with a response video with to um, Tony Pony's response video <laughs> he made for me. Um, now, a couple things before I start. Um, one, I am under the weather, which explains why it took me so long to um, to do this, and um, so my voice is a little messed up, and I might be hacking and coughing, so I'm going to apologize ahead of time. Two, um, I have nothing against uh, uh, Tony from uh, the Sustainable Center. Um, actually, um, when I first started YouTube, he was one of the guys that I'd watch. It was him and Nataku. Actually inspired me to make my own channel, so I have a lot of respect for Tony. Um, and so this is not a personal attack. So, <clears throat> uh, first off, um, the, se the thing that seemed to upset him the most is that basically um, I lumped in fantasy with 40k. That's totally unintentional. Um, the video was solely about 40k. So, uh, if it seemed like I was lumping the two in, that was... That was, it's simply not the case, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I will say that I have played uh, Fantasy years ago and quit when they changed the uh, rules. I think the current rule set uh, I left for um, reasons that I could say for a different video. Um, <clears throat> now, moving on. Um, in no particular order. So, one, Tony claims that the um, War Machine, Malifaux, other games have not shown growth. And, and um, that, is, that is a false statement. I could say that about War Machine and Malifaux because I have... Um, not only participated in a, a you know in a club that has grown the Malifaux community. Uh, you can look at things outside of my local area, like you know um, Gen Con and Adepticon events, and you could see that um, you know Malifaux tournaments, Malifaux events have grown in, in size. Uh, same with War Machine. Uh, I was just at a convention in San Diego where, you know, the War Machine tournament had about 40 players. Um, and when when I go to stores, now I go to stores from northern L.A. to Orange County to down to San Diego. So it's a huge area. Um, the reason I do that is um, I'm actually a volunteer for weird and so I demo Malifo and I demo in different stores and I go to different events um, so I when I go to these different stores um, typically like last night I went to a store in uh, Chatsworth um, there was no 40k being played there uh, there was War Machine being played there was Magic the Gathering being played uh, but there's no 40k and typically um, uh, most of the stores that I, I visit uh, more fre frequently I see uh, the War Machine War Horde players um, more often than I see 40k and you could say that you know Privateer Press has been around for I don't know 10 something years and they have certainly grown so that's all I need to say about that I mean you could also take their events, you know, at Gen Con and, and Adepticon and look at their attendance and they have growth, okay? Now, 40K, um, or we'll just take Games Workshop, for example. Um, there is no more Games Day LA, all right? That's been gone for a number of years. Also, the... Um, the flagship, which was the LA Battle Bunker. So one of GW's biggest, um, their home stores, has sh they've shrank down and they've gone to um, 
a much smaller store. In fact, the GW closest to me is also shrank down. They used to have a uh, space for six tables, and now they only have one table. And you know, you're pretty much there for a demo, or you know, you just go there and you buy your stuff, and you get you get the fuck out. That's that's the uh, game store. Now, you said that people um, join, you know, find uh, 40k, and they, you know, enter it, and that happens on a daily basis. This is true. Um, however, uh, for people, for for every pe person that um, finds 40k and you know jumps in and buys, there are people leaving in droves. Reason I say that is because the game club that I belong to, which is several hundred members that span, like I said, it's all of Southern California. Um, most of them are X 40k players, and when you talk to the War Machine guys, they are X 40k players. Um, they have just kind of grown out of this and uh, got tired of 40k for whatever reason um, and left. So GW, 40k cycles in new players and cycles out old players. Um, that's just sort of how they are. And I, I would even go as far as, far as to say that GW actually um, is aware of that and wants that to happen because the older veteran players... <clears throat> The older veteran players will spend less over time because they've already built their army. The new player has to has to jump in at that buy-in price that you say is like seven fifty. Let's we'll say seven fifty. I think that's that's fair. Seven fifty is uh, a decent number for your fifteen hundred to two thousand point forty k army. But I I, I do I. What I'm saying is, um, my point is, is that, um, you know, that GW really doesn't care about those veteran players. Now, you say competitive players keep the market alive. I would have to agree with that because they, they you know, codex jump. So GW is looking for those, you know, big buyers, people that codex jump or people that are new to the hobby. The veteran guys who like, say you like Space Wolves, and that's all you collect. Well, you're only going to be buying a little bit at a time. So if you leave the hobby, well, fuck you. Um, but that's another reason why it's you know something that I wouldn't want to introduce a new player to that type of environment. Okay, so um, now I only watched your video once, so I'm just trying to go over all the points off the top of my head. Now, um, you also said that um, codex changes and rule changes don't affect um, the casual players. It affects competitive players. Um, I say ask the, the four or five people that I know that play squats whether or not um, codex changes and rule changes affect, affect them. Um, Ask the couple guys that I know that have a Gene Stealer cult army whether or not, you know, GW changes affect them whether they're competitive or not. Um, even for a guy like my, myself, I was a, I wouldn't consider myself a competitive player at the time. I played uh, from Codex Katachan. Uh, well, you know, good luck trying to feel that army, you know. Um, we could even go now, now I only played up to 5th edition, so, um, but if you take, f I believe, 4th edition guard to 5th edition guard codex, um, in the older codex you were allowed to buy veteran abilities, and, and you could do this to sort of represent the homeworld where your, your Imperial Guard came from, and it was a, a mechanic to either make the guards guardsmen better or to make them more fluffy or both <clears throat> new codex comes along and all that's gone so you know if you were playing elis and drop troops um all of a sudden you know to sort of make your troops work um 
you'd have to buy a bunch of, you know, Valkyries. And sure, it's still viable. Sure, these are still playable. But, you know, you do have to make adjustments. Whether you are a non-competitive um, player or a competitive player. And so, I still stand by that charge. Actually, going back to the price point, um, one of the things that you mentioned was that, um, you know, a lot of hobbies are expensive. You mentioned golf. Um, and, you know, if you can't afford a 40K army, then this is not the hobby for you. That's only if you are pushing 40K. Um, now, I think a more reasonable approach is if I can... If I can spend a hundred dollar buy-in, which, for example, Malifaux would be a hundred dollar buy-in. Uh, that's a box set, uh, the cards, and um, <clears throat> the rule book, and you're still under a hundred dollars. You could probably even throw in a, a blister or two for that. Um, and then you know maybe every paycheck you spend forty, fifty bucks. Um, adding on to your force that's a much more reasonable um you know barrier than you know a 750 barrier so if someone can spend you know two 150 to or 100 to 200 dollars on their hobby um they should be disqualified from tabletop gaming and i think that's one of the main reasons i would shy away from 40k okay so you also uh mentioned that you know the 40k community is growing um simply because you know people are getting subs to their channel you mentioned your channel um getting subs every day as proof of that i um i would say that's proof that somebody has found your channel and likes your content and his, and hit the uh, sub button I would not use that as proof that you you know that this player is you know someone who just discovered tabletop wargaming and has subbed to you I think that's uh, that has a lot of assumption to that and is uh, you know it's just wrong to assume that now it could be the case but I think it's more likely that people are finding your channel and liking your content. I mean, if we were to go by that logic, then, you know, everyone who subs to me, and I get subs as well, um, you know, likes uh, Blood Bowl, or they like, you know, In Her Majesty's Name. Um, and and I'm, like, growing their those communities, and that's just simply not true. Uh, this next bit's a little bit long. Uh, so I'm going to try to just make it as short as possible. Um, you say that when I when I claim that you know 40k is the worst game ever. Uh, that's GW hate. Uh, let me clarify this, okay? So when I say that Warhammer 40k is the worst game ever, what I mean is that Warhammer 40k is the worst game ever. <laughs> no, it's just playing. Um, no, it is though. Um, a reason I'm saying that, I, I have several reasons, I'll just go over them real quick. Um, you know, uh, we look at things like the mechanics of the game. Um, you know, it's it's a D6 system, it's a flat D6, you know, there are no modifiers, or there are very little modifiers. And um, so there's little, there's, um, so the system's sort of, you know, flat and basic. Um, we look at other games, um, they've done things with the D6, like Spartan Games has the exploding D6. Uh, War Machine has a 2D6 system. Um, yeah, Malfo that uses no dice whatsoever, it uses cards. Um, other companies have found uh, more interesting ways to come up with their random number generator. Uh, another problem I have with uh, 40K is the big problem I have is that 70 to 80 percent of your strategy is list building okay that's not for me that's not a mark of a good game when most of the game 
most of the strategy occurs away from the game when you're sitting at home jerking off the army builder or, or you know reading uh, forums and just trying to find out that perfect list um, that's not a good tactical game um, for example and I'm going to use Malfo a lot because that, that's what I play and I play other games but one of the things I like to teach people um, that are new to Malifo is that you can win this game with having your entire crew slaughtered if you're smart enough. Your in-game tactics um, dictate whether or not you win. Um, now it's it's true that there are some you know heavy list builds or whatever, but a smart player um, can take those lists and, and and or I can win with a with a box set and a blister in Malifo. I've done it. I've won tournaments that way. <clears throat> You cannot say the same for 40k. The guy with the battle box, you know, as opposed to the guy who's who's custom made his army because he spent all freaking day, you know, researching the perfect list. He's not going to have the same chance. I just think that's a bad, you know, a mark of a bad game. It's one of the reasons why I love Blood Bowl is that you know Blood Bowl, a smart tactician can win. Um, over a guy that's just, you know, uh, has, say, the perfect, you know, list build. Uh, and I think it's much, a much more enjoyable game when you're actually using in-game tactics instead of just, like I say, you know, uh, jerking off to um, freaking army builder. Uh, there's a lot of reasons I, I, I think 40k is a bad game. The whole, you know, my entire turn... I move all my for forces, shoot, and then, you know, you go with what, whatever's left. I think that's an outdated system. Uh, if we look at most other games, you know, they've learned that alternating uh, activations is the way to go. It's more strategical. It's more engaging. It's more fun. Uh, the fluff is stagnant. The Emperor's been fucking dying for, I don't know, how many years. Um, I still stand by... Um, the fact that you're being cheated in the number of factions, which you agree with, so I don't need to go into that with Space Marines. Um, I just I just think overall, um, compared to the other games that I have tried and played, um, which is a pretty extensive list. I don't I don't have to I don't want to say it all, but uh, 40k is far inferior to any game that I've played because every game that I played has done something to make things interesting. If we look at 40k <clears throat> as a whole from second edition to you know from from when I started which was Rogue Trader second edition transition to now it's gone simpler. It's been stripped. It's um the game uh the more interesting parts of the game have been taken away. Um, you know, models and units have been taken away. Entire factions have been taken away uh, for the sake of, you know, simplicity. And they want it that way so it could appeal to a younger um, audience. Or more, they want it to be more appealing to new players. But, but what, it, what it ends up happening is you get tired of that pretty quick and with a barrier like you say of 750 to enter when you when you get tired of something like that that money's wasted um, for me you know I could take the same 750 for example and I can get a ton of variety I can get different games uh, I can for example uh, I own every gremlin figure for Malifo and I will never have to, um, I will never be able to use all of them at one time, but I could switch in and out and I could have different variations for that. That just only cost me a couple hundred dollars. So if I had 750, I'm buying, you know, more of that product line from that company um, that allows, you know, a variety, a wider variety experience. Whereas, that same 750 gives me one, one fucking army from 40k. 
one army. That's one experience uh, with no wiggle room. That's your 1,500 points. That's it. That's all you get. And it's it's just it's horrible all around. Now you said a bunch of other stuff uh, about you know hating the, um, the the company and and you don't give them money directly. That's fine. Uh, uh, my my question was more of um, you are you know I hate the company. Um, I'm not um, you know pulling any punches on that. But I also think it's a bad game. So my my point was, hey, you could hate the company, but is the game really that good? That's more of a question. It wasn't a point. Um, I'm really asking people because I really don't see why 40k is a good game. I think it's horrible. I think it's a terrible fucking game. Um, uh, lastly, let me think. I'm trying to think of everything that you said. So, uh, I think I could just end this video by saying that, um, well, first of all, thanks for the uh, video response. I appreciate that. I do appreciate having, you know, uh, discussions with people that have a difference of a, an opinion, and we do it in a civil way. Um, I think the last thing that I wanted to mention was that you um, said I was making a direct comparison from the, you know, role-playing community and the board gaming community. Um, I wasn't doing a direct comparison. Um, what I'm saying is that these communities have grown because in my opinion um, it's it's a lot easier to get into an RPG. Um, it's a lot easier to get into a board game uh, and it's more appealing to the outside group um, because of well many factors but one of them being price. <clears throat> Now, when I demo at um, shows and conventions, um, most of the people that come up to the table and ask a bunch of questions and, and, and get the demo are D&D and board gamers. I'm saying that we could expand outside our realm. We could expand the pie if the game that, that we were using was different than 40K. Um, and you know, I don't, like like I said, I could probably make an entire separate video breaking down all of 40k and explaining why it's the worst game, why I think it's the worst game of all time, why I would rank it uh, dead last. It, you know, in in um, in games in tabletop games of all time, um, and you you could just dismiss this as GW hate. But, um, no, it's actually got bad mechanics. The fluff is, uh, like I said, I, I could get into a, a, a bunch of reasons why 40K is, uh, is just horrible. Uh, and, you know, people do jump into it, but they don't, they don't have a comparison from other games. They don't. I'm sorry. Um. But I can tell you that my community is made up of a bunch of X40K players because they discovered that there's stuff way better uh, out there. You yourself are is uh, actually proof of this because you left uh, 40K for fantasy, knowing that you know you know fantasy is a, a better game. Um, one of the earliest videos I saw of you. Um, you compare one of the comparisons you used was, uh, you know, 40k is checkers, fantasy is chess. You know, I'm saying it even gets better when you leave um, GW altogether. Um, there's there's a lot more interesting games, a lot more you know, there's stuff out there that I think is cheaper to get into. It's, um, you know, it it's got more interesting mechanics. It's got more interesting fluff. Um, that could be more appealing to, um, you know, the outside audience. And I've actually seen this happen. I'm not talking out of my ass. I have recruited people that have never played a tabletop game before and they are become, uh, they have become more act, more active than our, you know, hardcore tabletop members because they've discovered how awesome 
uh, tabletop wargaming is. And uh, if I was demoing 40k, well, one, I would want someone to shoot me in the face. And two, I think it would be, you know, messed up on my part to, you know, introduce them to that game when there's just better games out there. And I, you know, I'm staying by that opinion. I respect yours and I'm signing out.